if we made a list of our top 10 favorite superheroes, I would be fucking shocked to the core of my very fucking soul mm -hmm. if you didn't put Batman in the top spot. Or at the very least, the top three spot. Because mm -hmm. if I know one thing about you... It's that you love fucking Batman. You love him so much, you would probably get down your knees and make like a seal if you saw him right now, right here. Wow. So let me go put on my bat suit. Oh, I knew it. But the point is... Look, I'm not going to lie. I was actually considering if I ever get a tat, mm -hmm. it would probably be a bat tat. Because many loves in life come and go, mm -hmm. but bats will always be there. Yeah, you, you've had a bat lust ever yeah. since you were a... Uh, a fucking, I was gonna say a mini kin. Apparently, <laughs> he wears some form of doll. All right. If it's you, you've been, I can't fetus. remember a time that you didn't like the bat. You came out of the womb screeching yep. and flapping fucking vestigial wings. <laughs> yeah, it did. Yeah, you love Batman, man. In fact, uh, you know, if I go into your room, bat things everywhere. Literal bats because yeah, it's so dirty it's in there. Because it's dirty. Uh, but you're those okay figure, with that. Those figures aren't actually Batman. They're just black from the grime. Yeah. But bats, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, <laughs> so I don't know what that bats. has to do with Batman. But anyway, yeah, man. Uh, so it surprised me when you said that you had a severe problem with something Bat-related. And of course, I shouldn't be that surprised because we did get Batman and Robin and Batman Forever, which sucked. Yeah. And that, that fucking Batman 66 movie, which sucked. Oh, man. But, uh... I don't count those as real bad things. Yeah, I don't either. Fuck that. But anyway, it's horrible. The point is, you had you said you had a big problem with Batman, and I, I said just to hold that thought, let's do a video on that because yeah. it's got to be something colossal, nay life changing, that disturbs you about the bat. So hit, hit me with it, give it to me, sock it to me, as they say. What is it that bothers you about Batman? Action. So you know that part in uh, Batman Returns at the end? Mm -hmm. I don't exactly remember how, but he gets his like face messed up or some shit. And he just tears off his cowl. Yeah, when uh, he's confronting uh, Shrek and, uh, and uh, Catwoman, right? Yeah. Okay. Why the flip did he rip it off? Like, is it is there like a separate part? Or is he just like, is it just one part? I'm assuming it's one part since he ripped it off. Does that mean he has to like sluice into his suit from the bottom up? Or is it a cow? The cow is not a separate piece. It does make you wonder where the zipper on this is. There a zipper? I'm thinking it's just not? like a shirt situation where he like slips into the suit. But yeah, that aside, let's just suppose the suit has a zipper. But that doesn't count the cow because the cow is not attached to the suit. So why would he rip it off? Correction: Why wouldn't the to the cow the towel? I was gonna say the cow. Just come off. Like yes. why, why couldn't he just remove the cowl? Instead, he rips it off like a like a little rubber piece, and it shows the material. You're like, oh, it's just rubber. Yeah, it's not a smooth. No. Cut nothing. It's just like a jagged he edge. Just cuts that baby, or he just rips that baby off, and it doesn't look good. It doesn't. And you're like, oh man. It it, it begs a thousand questions. I was willing to forgive his shitty glide in the first movie because I was like, all right. See, that's what I was gonna say. I can't forgive that glide. It wasn't now, good. Now, a lot of people like the first movie, and I like it too. Don't get me wrong. I just have some fucking big issues with it. And uh, among those big issues is that fucking glide. It's not good. It's like the first time you see him too. Dude, especially... Look, I can forgive a movie not having the money or the effects. Uh, or the tech. Savvy or the tech to make something work. And you can forgive that. This movie had money. Yeah. And it had a lot of pros working on it. On top of that, a, a good seasoned director... With some visual fucking and they couldn't, chutzpah. They couldn't figure out necks. They could, yeah, they couldn't figure out necks. One, two. I can forgive that. Can you at least make him tilt as he glides? Yeah. Instead he's, he's just like yeah, he's standing fucking straight and he just moves ahead like he's if he's on a rail or yeah. some shit. Man, I hate that. Not to mention the fact also that not a big fan of uh, Jack Nicholson's Joker. Just throwing that out there. Don't kill me for that. Not a big fan. I mean, don't hate him a hundred percent. I just think there's some stuff he does that really fucking sucks. I will agree with you. I'm thinking Prince Dance. I will agree with you. He actually grew on me the last time I watched it. Mm -hmm. But that Prince Dance is inexcusable. It is. Uh, and that freaking Dance oh. with the Devil in the Pale Moonlight yeah, shit sucks. sucks donkeys. His face sucks. His face does. His freaking massive gun that makes no sense kind of blows donkeys too. But overall, I kind of like him. I don't like the, the, the 
physical figure he cuts. It doesn't yeah. speak Joker to me. It just speaks fat guy that doesn't give a damn. Mm-hmm. Now, now, fucking Jack is the is a great guy to play the Joker. Don't get me wrong, but I have a feeling a big part of the decision making was he has a smile that's like you know. And then right they now. cover it, and then they cover it with an even worse smile. Yeah, you know he can play a cycle like no other, and that's good. But uh, yeah, I wasn't too keen on that. But anyway, we're getting off track here. Oh. The fucking ripped cowl. It's not good. Like, why does he rip it? And freaking, why is his face sticking out? He's also really slimy when he takes it off. Well, he's place. probably fucking sweating his glands off. Under but that here's thing. the thing. Like, all right, cool. I'll give you that. Your cowl doesn't separate. That means the cowl and the chest piece are one piece. There is no seam on the arm, so that's one piece. Yeah. The only seam you see is on the gloves. So you what you're suggesting is that he literally has the suit molded onto him every time he goes yeah, out. Yeah, because night. you don't see like a seam in the pants either. Not that I remember, at least. Now this is an interesting thing that you've brought up, though, because I'm thinking I like, have long theorized that he. Okay, well, we got to go back to to something here. Well, let me His give right, you my theory first. Okay, I'm thinking Terminator Two endoskeleton molding chamber do you know what you're talking what i'm talking yeah. about those toys where you just stick the little endoskeleton and skin comes on them i'm thinking that maybe but that doesn't that's not very like financially viable like you gotta buy a lot of rubber and it's gotta melt onto your skin and you gotta do it on a nightly yeah fucking schedule. What, if, what if like the freaking bad signal turns on and you gotta go meet shitty freaking gordon in like a hurry you're not gonna sit in there and wait for it to harden so there's got to be another way. Maybe it has like a like a freeze hardening process. The point is the fucking suit it doesn't makes make sense. no sense. No. But see, I'm going to amp up the non the nonsensical aspect of the suit. Now, in Batman Forever, which is awful by the way. It's not good. Unforgivably bad. Uh he does have kind of like a little bit more movement in yeah. the head. I mean, eventually it starts off with kind of like what he had in the in part 1 and 2, but he does have a little bit more movement. Which is good, but he also has nipples, which is bad. Which is bad, but that's well, that's not even to the nipple thing because that's a whole fucking different argument. But uh, you know, you kind of forgive that a bit. But then you're like, where did he get this new armor? And and the answer is, he has acolytes. Like, like in the Nolan verse, it's uh, it's uh, Lucius Fox that gets him his new gear. But it's suggested in Batman and Robin that Alfred is behind. Yeah. The outfits. Now, this presents a whole new universe of disturbing possibilities. True. One, Alfred knows every fucking nook and cranny well, on Bruce Wayne's body. To be specific, Alfred seems to have um, progressively learned every nook and cranny. Because it doesn't start that way. It kind of starts a little blocky in the first two movies. But by the time... By the time it's by just the time second Batman skin. Forever, yeah, that baby has every little crease. And there's like a cup and there's freaking ass shots it, so yeah. he, he, he he's grown to learn bruce's freaking body to a disturbing detail it, it, yeah it's like literally one step away from you know seeing the folds of his penis yeah you know every little, little crack and wrinkle in his sack yep it's like that far away from just being a second skin and yeah and you're right it gets progressively more you know uh grotesque revelatory of his knowledge Yep, of fucking Bruce's body. But here's the most disturbing part: in in Batman and Robin, uh, Alfred's niece, I guess, shows up from. I guess he has a niece now. She shows up from fucking England. Is she supposed to be? Yeah, from I England? think so. Uh, anyway, she doesn't have an English accent, so that fucking blows. But anyway, she shows up, and she decides she's gonna go batting around with a bat. I guess. And uh, from in one fucking scene to the next, he he has a fucking suit for her. He's like, I made you this. He actually says, I made you this suit or something like that. And it... And it is revealing. It is revealing. Again, I'm not going to say I stroked off to this. I did. There's no nipples. There's no nipples. There originally was, though. But even but they were like Alfred, dude, what the flip? Because Alfred's a real character, by the way. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Real life. He didn't hire a guy. It's just him. Uh, so yeah, man, he has like a fucking. Not only does he know every inch of his employer's body, but apparently he knows the exact measurements. That is disturbing. Of his niece's body. That is disturbing. But I'll I'll, I'll raise you one. Mm-hmm. In Batman Forever, 
Robin comes in and he has a suit for him and he doesn't know this person That's true. at all. That is fucking true. So he knew some orphan street urchins measurements to the fucking T. Somehow. At least the niece, you can kind of get away with it. Like, oh, maybe they were in contact and she sent him her measurements. That's weird, but <laughs> yeah, maybe. Freaking Robin? And say, okay, hold on. His niece didn't even... He didn't want his niece to be no. involved so in this No, so why did he make a suit? But he made this suit anyway. Like, I have this on lock. I got you, girl. And where the hell does freaking Alfred get the knowledge to make these suits? Yeah, I mean, he could... He's, he's, yeah, he's a pretty resourceful guy. He's been portrayed as having knowledge of... Like fucking martial arts and yeah, some Yeah, but the one in the movies is like an old guy. Yeah, but the one in that particular series is just an old fuck. Now, yeah. you could say he's been around the Wayne family forever and he's learned in many a thing. But considering that Bruce decided to be the bat, say, somewhere around his 20s, maybe. And I guess in the movies, he's maybe maybe in his 30s, maybe. I guess. He looks like he's 65. But yeah. In fact, you know what? He might be fucking younger because that is in part Batman Part 1. Uh, he is just starting to be the bat, right? No, I think he's been the bat for a he's while. He's been the bat? Yeah. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen yeah, him. Yeah, me too. I'm the point wrong. is... We're going off memory here, so... The point is, this his disturbing knowledge of is the body... nonetheless. Yeah, remains. The fuck is that? Yep. Why does he know? Why does he care to know? Why is it so intricately designed? Yeah. Dude, also, I'm not going to say... Look, I'm not going to say... That Alicia Silverstone's background was basically just masturbatory fodder. And that may be my uh, pre-teenage self-speaking. But mm-hmm. uh, but she was. Which means that this guy made a suit that was impractical. Yep. Was only there. She had high heels, man. That, yeah, she that's did. That's what I'm saying. And here. a massive head. And tits like fucking, you know, rocket ships. Yep. Which I'm not I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But it is if you want to fight crime. I you know what? It all makes sense now. You used to have a lot of Batgirl action figures. I had three. Yep. Yeah. That's... I had four. Kind of feel I... disgusted that I touched those. But I glued one on accident with real glue, by the way, before you even make that joke. Mm-hmm. Uh, the point is, this bat suit Enigma. It's not good. It's gotten out of hand. Yeah. Now I also don't like the fact that he was wearing Nikes in the first movie. <laughs> like, what the flip? <laughs> Uh, you got all this like a high tech, it just looks like rubber, but high tech bat suit. You got freaking Nikes on, dude. Hey, man. That carried over to the second one. They don't quit. It's true. I oh, wonder man. if he pumped himself up before yeah. he went into battle. Yeah, they, maybe he, he downgraded to LA gear in part three or something. Yeah. Fuck. Anyway, <laughs> any other fucking uh, bat uh, uh, problems you got? It's mostly that. Seriously, nothing in the fucking original series? Like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't know, the suit with a separate fucking faceplate oh, on it? Oh, well, yeah, but I don't count that as Batman. If we're going to open that box, then, yeah, that freaking suit sucks my donkey dick. And I don't have a donkey dick. That's the worst suit ever, by it's the way. It's horrible. I hate it. If, uh, for, okay, if the ones in the Bat series are impractical because he can barely fucking move, yep. the one in the original series, that is to it's say like freaking, the television like series. It's like freaking super thin cloth. Yeah, it's just like fucking stretchy nylon or something. It looks like it stinks. It looks yeah. like Adam West ass stinks in there. If you've ever put on nylons, and I have, don't have, ask. Yeah, actually, I have too. That's disturbing, yep. but uh, there you go. It's not disturbing when I do it, but no. when it is when you do it. Well, you had um, a reason. I didn't. I did. I was a Puritan. Don't ask. But anyway, the point is, if you've worn nylons, they do accumulate kind of like a weird scent. scent. And it's a mixture of your body scent with that weird material. Yeah, with that material scent. Uh, so you know Adam West kind of stunk. Yeah. Uh, it's not knocking the man. I'm pretty sure he was a cool cat, but uh, his Batman sure as hell sucked. Oh, yeah, he... And, uh, oh, man, that suit, though. It's Why not... was the fucking symbol, like, under yeah. his pecs? I mean, my, I did give a reason to this, but then you made a, a very good uh, comeback. And my reasoning was it's because maybe they wanted, like, a built guy, but freaking Adam West had zero muscle. <laughs> <laughs> and so it was down here but then you were like if he had muscle just be down here yeah 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 i mean that's a good argument to make yeah logically batman should be built i shouldn't mm-hmm. have a little uh muscle structure there but yeah the bigger the pecs are the lower the symbol would go on on this body stocking is what yep. it is 
So that fucking makes no sense. The faceplate, dude. I don't. I can't get over the face. I don't plate. like the faceplate. I can't get over those lines on his face. Yeah, what the bad. hell are those things? Bad. It's not good. Why does he need lines on his face? I don't understand. Why is he doing the bat two C? I don't understand. Because it interests him strangely. You interest me strangely. I gotta say that's pretty cool. It's though. pretty awesome. <laughs> it's pretty bad. I do hate that incarnation of Batman, but I do like that. Yeah, um, I gotta admit. I never cool. liked the blue suit. I always thought the blue suit sucked. Yeah, the blue suit does. Look, okay, um, let's ask this question. What is your favorite bat suit? My favorite bat suit is bat probably uh, Batman Dark Knight Returns. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kind of chubby looking. Big. Short, bulky. short ears. Yeah. Frank Miller look. Looks insane. Which I, uh, I guess if you're going live action, I might have to go with uh, BVS. Or I guess I should say Justice League. Now, I do like the Justice League one a little better, the black one. Um, not the tackier one, although that is cool. It's growing on me. Um, my least favorite. Ooh, that Adam West. Damn! I gotta say, though, my least favorite, Batman and Robin. When I they like get how you the, went from the thousand least favorites. The one that's got the, like, the, the revamp that's all silver and shit. Hated that one. Yeah, that is another thing that makes no sense. So Alfred, like, fucking waiting in the wing. Apparently he's a fucking clairvoyant. Yeah. Because Somehow apparently he, knows. he knew that they were going to fight an ice-themed villain. So he made ice-themed fucking suits for them that had... Oh, my God, man. They had fucking skates. Yeah, they did. They had skates, and they knocked their little booties together, and they popped out, and they skated. And didn't they have little, like, uh, little gliders when they're in the air, too? Yeah. I don't understand. It's not good. It appears that Alfred is, like, some sort of, like, I don't know, uh, God... <laughs> Devin God? Yeah, and he's manipulating Batman into having fights with people for his entertainment. Because he's like, uh, you're going to fight some ice villain. Here's your ice suit. It's not your good. color-coded ice suit. Why is it silver? It fucking sucks. That's all I know. You know what's funny, though? Um, that the whole neck thing was addressed in the Dark Knight. Mm-hmm. And yet, they couldn't address it in the old movies. Be like, why the fuck does he rip his cowl off? Yeah. It's not good. No. I gotta say, though, just to to, to, to put my opinion in here. Uh-huh. My favorite uh, iteration of the suit in film has been the more, like, tactical appearance of the suit in Dark Knight and Dark Knight Rises. Uh, but I will go for the more traditional look. Yeah, Ben Affleck pulls that off pretty well. Looks fucking badass. So that's a kudos. Mm-hmm. But uh, can't get over that. Like you, I can't get over that Batman and Robin. It's not good. So that's your least favorite? My least favorite is the Batman and Robin, yeah. At least Adam West has the excuse of they were adapting yeah, or going for that true. 60s corny kids style version of the comic. True. Whereas uh, by Batman and Robin, you have no excuse. You not only have... From 1975 forward, a serious Bat comic. You only don't only have that, but you have two movies that you know went it okay. in depth yeah. into the dark aspects of it, and you create this bullshit throwback to the 60s. It fucking sucks. It's a good thing you bring up. Uh, I don't have no idea how I didn't remember this. Mm-hmm. I hate the symbol from the first movie. Oh, with, <laughs> with, a, with a little freaking extra, passion, extra little. Uh, now you might be thinking, that's I was gonna say Ahab, but that's not my name. You might be thinking, fat guy whose name I don't remember. That's me stop talking, by the way. It was just the it was just the gold with the regular bat. No, that's the one that's in the promo stuff. In the movie, it's got little extra little legs. Yeah. And I hate it. Why is why is it so angular? It's got like ten thousand freaking prongs coming out and shit. It looks like shit. I hate that symbol. Man, I've seen you go on rants about this symbol, and I gotta be honest with you. Yeah, the promotional material all has the standard bat symbol. It's understandable because so it you, looks cool. Yeah, so you forget that that's that the other look is is the emblem on his chest in the actual movie. Not to mention that in the movie, apart from freaking prongs coming out at the bottom of the freaking bat, it's bright yellow, like super. It's not the gold. It's yeah. bright yellow and it, it looks shitty. Uh, I do have an action figure in which they just use the gold and the regular because, yeah. It doesn't look like ass like the one that you used in the movie. Hate that one, dude. Feet. Why does that feet? I love uh, I love Michael Keaton as Batman, but uh, I will say he had a weird body shape. Yeah, like very top heavy. 
And it's reflected in, like, the material they made for it, too. <laughs> like, the toys? Yeah. It's like, damn, man, how does he even stand? Although, I, I will say that the animated series, Batman was top-heavy as shit. Yeah, he was. And his legs were, like, fucking needle He's points. tiny little arms. <laughs> <laughs> there was that one scene. Uh, anyway. I always kind of liked... Uh, I liked him as as Batman... I was I didn't love him as Batman, and then I was like kind of the same as his Bruce Wayne. I was like, he's okay. He was an okay one for me. Better than Val Kilmer for sure. Yeah, my fucking fluctuating colon is better freaking than Val Kilmer. George Clooney didn't even show up to freaking film that day. He was like his clone. George Clooney. Yeah. George Clooney is so awful that he doesn't even. You can't even count him as a Batman. Nope. Because he wasn't Batman he was and there. Or Bruce Wayne. He was just. Shit. Clooney, only not cool. Not to say that Clooney's super cool, but, you know. He was cool at the ladies time. Ladies love I mean, Clooney, I guess. He had done, like, Dust Till Dawn and shit. That's true. He he had just come off, of, like, the likes of Dust Till Dawn, which was awesome. But, uh, let's face it, Clooney's more like a, like an auteur now. And, yeah, uh, he's, like, too fancy for that yeah, shit. Yeah, all his stuff is not really, like... It's not cool. great. I mean, it, it, it has aspirations. There's some good stuff. He's done some great, brilliant stuff. But more often than not, it's like, yeah, that's probably a good movie, but I'm not going to watch it because yeah. it doesn't look like I'd enjoy it one bit. I love how no matter what he does, you could always just throw Batman. Yeah, see, Robin that's the genius. On. I think that, look, Clooney is a big name. Mm-hmm. Huge in Hollywood. But he, in terms of box office returns... It's not great. It's not great. He nope. he doesn't make that much money, you know. If you put him in a big budget movie, his mo- his name is not going to attract shit because he's more used to doing these smaller flicks, these think pieces and character pieces and shit. All right, that's fair, but I think the reason he kept keeps getting these uh, you know, approved for production and greenlit is because all they got to do is go you know what? At least it's not Batman and Robin. It's true. Fuck it. Give them a few thousand. I mean, a few mil, and uh, and we'll have uh, something that's not Batman and Robin for sure. Oh man, you had the silver card. Fucking shit. Bad man. card. Fucking bad card, dude. Fucking bad card. So at the end of this, we realize that uh, we probably hate Batman. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna go burn all your shit. Yeah. No, I mean Batman's had a lot of garbage. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, but he's still pretty rad. Batman's the shizzle. Yep. If as far as superheroes go, like actual super, I mean, he doesn't even have he's superpowers. Not even a, yeah, he's like but a, he counts as a superhero. He does. So uh, as far as superheroes go, he'd be my favorite DC superhero. He's not my favorite DC comic character, but he's my favorite DC superhero. I'm surprised. He so he's pretty cool. I'm surprised he didn't use it as an excuse to name drop your boy John Constantine. I, I won't, dude. You just you read my mind. I was about to say he's not my favorite superhero. I mean, he's not my favorite comic character in DC. He's my favorite superhero. Pause. Ellipses. John Constantine, though. <laughs> he's the shit. You know what's funny? Just yeah. to just to finish this off on a completely unrelated note. All right. I, I noticed recently that John Constantine, which is... Now, if you're going off the movie, uh, the John Constantine in the comics, if you're not familiar with this, is very different to the one in the Keanu Reeves movie. Although I enjoy the, the Keanu Reeves movie. Uh, he's very different to that Constantine, so just keep that in mind. But anyway, I noticed that John Constantine, my long-standing, I just got to pitch it again. Yeah, I know. My long-standing favorite character in DC Comics universe, uh, is basically Harry Damore, a character created by Clyde Barker, my favorite author. Got to throw that one in there too. Mm-hmm. But I barely noticed this the other day; like it never had crossed my mind. But the reason it crossed my mind is because I was reading the Hellraiser comic and Damore makes an appearance. And just like the fact that he was in a comic made my mind go, what? Wait a minute. You want to get your mind blown once more? Oh, well, I'll be blown. All right. Damore, Alan Moore. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. look, check this out. Clive Barker created Harry Damore. Alan Moore created Constantine in the same fucking year. They're both British. They're both weirdos. I think they were 69ing. Oh, shit. Conspiracy Alan. theory, you heard it here first. Yep. Alan Moore and Clive Barker were 69ing. It's fact. <laughs> hashtag. Hashtag the truth. Hashtag 69ing Barker and Moore. Yep. Anyway, we're going to go 69. This has been, <laughs> this has been uh, Ahab and the Goon Tip chatting bats because we needed to talk about Batman. Yeah. 
hit like, share, subscribe, and those notification buttons because we're out of here.